coming up on today's show. In, when you're looking at any of them, you want to think about the idea of being organized enough. I mean, is there a level where you could say, yes, I'm finally organized enough? Being organized to a certain degree supports what you're trying to do, how you want your life to be, but or getting organized doesn't take over your life. If our mind is cluttered with thoughts, then it's, it's hard to, to move past that. The three essentials for staying organized on today's Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today we are going to talk about the three essentials for keeping organized and we have Mrs. Oh So Organized herself, Linda Samuels, uh, joining us again. Uh, Linda, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you, John? I am just feeling really good. So I, it's always fun to talk to you because you got a lot of energy and you always have a lot of great uh, tips and information for us. So. Uh, let's get into it right away. Uh, we tease the three essentials for staying organized. What are the three? And let's dig into them. Well, the three are thoughts, time, and space. All right. And, yeah. Well, let's let's start with uh, thoughts. I mean, oh. that's a good place to start. Like, what are we thinking right well, now? Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, before I even start with those, to set them up, in when you're looking at any of them, you want to think about the idea of being organized enough. So in any of these areas we're gonna talk about, we're not looking at perfection, we're looking at what's reasonable. So things to think about are that there's variations in what organized looks and feels like for each of us in those areas. So just be aware of that. Well, um, and, and that's that's actually a, the, a mental block that a lot of people have is they either don't think they're worthy enough or they, they're not a perfectionist or they're not, uh, they don't feel organized. I mean, is there a level where you could say, yes, I'm finally organized enough? I think that a lot, that level is um, probably the expectation that we put on ourselves, that there isn't this level that is the same for everyone, but it's the idea that it, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can let go of that and you can find a balance that is that works for you. So that organized support, being organized to a certain degree supports what you're trying to do, how you want your life to be, but or getting organized doesn't take over your life, right. if that makes sense. It, it does, <laughs> and that, that ties in perfectly with the mind. So let's talk about the mind and ways that we can deal with it. Okay, so one of the things that happens with organizing and our thoughts is that our thoughts, you know, we talk about clutter, right? A lot of times we talk about organizing, the word clutter comes up. So I think of the word mind clutter. And if our mind is cluttered with thoughts, then it's it's hard to, to move past that. So part of an essential of getting organized is handling that mind clutter. And there, there are lots of ways to doing that. Um, one technique is you could do what I call a brain download. Okay, you know, we, we do computer downloads, but our, our brains are very much like that. And simply the way to do that is you can write a list. You can, if you're an auditory learner, you can speak into a voice recorder, but you want to get all of those thoughts that are running around your brain. I'm sure it happens to you. It happens to all of us. It happens to me to get them out. And then once they're out, you can organize them in a way. So that's that's one idea. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you, what does that container look like that you, you you do it? But it could be a pad of paper, right? Like you said, it could be an audio recorder. So there's a lot of different ways you can bring it out. Sure. Um, I For myself personally, I use a bunch of things. I, I don't use the audio recorder, but I do use uh, paper, actual you know pen and paper. But I also use... Um, electronic device to help me to do it. You know, you can do it on a computer. It doesn't matter. You just want it out, out of this part. You know? right. <laughs> okay. Um, another thing is you want to clarify your priorities. That's part of that mind clutter. You know, we have all these things going on. So what's important? So in that process, you want to think of both the big picture and then also think of both the short and long-term things, how those fit into it. So that's part of those, those thoughts. And when you once get your thoughts out of out of your mind, you can start to organize them into these categories. That helps. Now, now let's stop on there for a second. So uh, you say short term, long term. 
Uh, are you talking about maybe creating an, uh, another piece of paper with columns or uh, on your electronic version of that? Uh, is that putting them in buckets? What, what's, let's talk about that a little bit more. It's interesting. Again, there isn't one way to do it. Um, some people, you know, if you're, if you like to write, then having them in lists on paper is great. Um, some people use giant post-it notes and have, you know, color code the post-it notes on a big wall. You know, it, it, it really doesn't matter how you do it, but you want to do it in a way that you can access and manipulate to then move you along in, the, in whatever process that you're doing, whatever you're trying to accomplish. Would you think that prioritizing comes in yet, or are we are we not to that piece where you're maybe grouping importance or, or you know, level? Um, you could be at that point. Um, again, you have to capture the ideas before you can prioritize them. So it's really capturing them, getting them out, and then you can start to move them around in the buckets or the lists or the post-its or however you want to handle it. Got it. The other thing is sometimes when the mind is cluttered, it's actually worthwhile to do what I call invite a distraction, which may seem counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we get so caught up in our thoughts, we can't even move forward. And so you might just need to take a break from what you're doing and do something completely different, like check your email, make a phone call, do an errand, just take yourself out of what's happening up here almost to disrupt the, the, the flow of ideas that are coming that allow you to focus on something else simple, that can also help to reduce some of that mind clutter. Mm -hmm. well, uh, that's a great suggestion, too. I mean, it's uh, probably also to give your mind a little rest, too. Exactly. Give your mind a little rest. I like that. <laughs> the other thing is when your mind is feeling cluttered, very often we forget to take care of ourselves. So, so a couple things to think about. First of all, that state of feeling cluttered and all these thoughts going on, it's temporary. And it's good to keep that perspective that it, you're not going to always feel like this. The other thing is it's important just to remember the basics, like make sure that you're sleeping well, make sure that you're drinking enough water. I have some water here. <laughs> um, cheers. Make, <laughs> cheers. <laughs> um, make sure that you're eating properly that you're getting an exercise. All those things actually will help you with what, what's happening with those thoughts running around in your head. So sometimes we can lose sight of that when we're feeling completely stressed out by what's happening up above. Now, do you think it's important uh, in, in these three essentials that the mind is really the first thing that you have to attack? It almost seems like you'd have to get that one taken care of first. You know, it's, it's interesting that you asked that. You noticed I did put it first, right? Yes. So, um, I, I don't like to be absolute about you have to do things in this order because as we know, flexibility is so much a part of, of what really makes our lives work better. So for one person, they may have it, what, they may be extremely clear on what they want to do. There may be no confusion. And so maybe the thoughts piece isn't right first, but um, certainly at least getting the idea of clarity of what it is you're trying to accomplish to get organized, it, it is helpful to at least start there. You may not feel cluttered there, though, right? right. That may yeah. not be one of your issues. So. All right. Anything else in the mind category before we move on? Um, yes. I think one other thing, which is just I found this very useful, is I talked about um, inviting distractions. And the other one I would say would be to initiate conversations. And have you ever noticed that when your mind is just reeling, it's helpful sometimes to talk out loud with your family, with your friends, with your trusted colleagues, just to verbalize what's, what, what you're thinking about. Um, the process of doing that, of talking, being listened to, being validated, sometimes can bring clarity to what you're thinking about. You may not even resolve what all these issues are, but it just is a very helpful step. Again, it doesn't work for everyone, but it, it can be a really helpful tool. You know, one thing I found personally, which is kind of a combination of that with the, the whole mind dump, is talking about all these things with another person. So, you know, the topic of your, you know, your talking is, oh, okay, I've got this, 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 you know, I've, down, I've downloaded them all onto a sheet of paper or on my electronic uh, device. And you know, what do you think about that? And just processing them through, I think also tells your brain that you're dealing with it. Yes, 
I think there is. I think that's very much a part of it. Um, and again, we all process in different ways. So for instance, um, I'm definitely a verbal processor, a talker. You know, you can see my hands go. No. <laughs> um, so for me, whenever there's there are things that I'm trying to resolve, I do like to write, but I also really, it really helps if I can talk with someone that I trust. That huge, huge factor for me. It sorts things through. And you, you verbalize what you're struggling with. And sometimes the other person can even offer up a perspective that's helpful. I'm sure you've had that experience, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, we're going to take a quick little break here, and we've got one of the three down. So when we get back, we're going to dig into the other two uh, yes. of the three essentials of getting organized. We are with Linda Samuels of OhSoOrganized.com, and we'll be right back. Looking to get your home organized but don't know where to start? The newest ebook from Smead will help you with room by room organizing tips given by the top professional organizers in the nation. Download your free copy now at smead.com forward slash room. That's smead.com forward slash R O O M. Smead, keeping you organized. We are back now on Keeping You Organized, talking about the three essentials of getting organized with Linda Samuels of OhSoOrganized.com. Uh, That's your blog. You also have a, another uh, website as well, correct? Yes, I do. Um, I have OhSoOrganized.com. That's my organizing blog, uh, website. And then I have the other side of Organized.com, which is my book and blog website. Yes. Yeah. And, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a, in a bit. But we've got to get. We've only got one of the three down, so we need to go to number two of the three essentials. And of course, how funny because the next one is time. So maybe I should rush through this one, right? <laughs> no, we have all the time there is, right? We have all the time there is, as, as long as we hurry up. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, with time, again, it's one of the essentials of getting organized because just as our mind can be cluttered, so can our time. And by time, I mean really our schedules. So the first piece is. You hear this so much that people are feel overscheduled. They're just it's this too busy syndrome. I don't know if you've heard people talk about this, but when you say to someone, "How are you doing?" You know, very often they go, "I'm busy. I'm busy." Have you heard that? Oh yeah, I'm swamped. Yeah, it's almost like a a, a badge of honor. That's right. And um, and I think, of course, we all want to feel that what we're doing that are, that our lives have meaning, and maybe somehow that busy is tied to it. But the reality is, is that it can also create almost a syndrome of this too busy. So for that, I would say, really be mindful of what you say yes to. And, you know, are there things you've said yes to that in fact could be delegated? Do you have to do all the things you've committed to? Um, look at what you've said yes to and decide, are there any of those yeses that can be converted to a no? Because sometimes we say yes to something and we really haven't thought carefully about how that affects the full picture. Right. So, um, you know, I am definitely a proponent of, of, of stepping in and, and, and saying yes to opportunities and saying yes to things that are exciting and meaningful and all that. But you still want to be really mindful of how that fits into the full picture of your life. Right. So that, yeah. Yeah, well, I was going to say, uh, the, uh, uh, there's kind of, as we interview professional organizers, and there's a lot of different ways to approach time. Uh, and, you know, some people might say, you know, schedule everything in your calendar, even like uh, a block of time to do nothing or for your own self. So your calendar is full, but it has a lot of white space in it because you've scheduled it. And other people say, no, your calendar is just for your appointments. And, you know, you put those in there and leave everything else out. So how do you approach a calendar? Well, you know, it's, it's actually interesting that you say that because there, I, again, I don't, I don't believe there's any one way. And I think what, what's going to work, it, what's important is it works for you. Right. Um, but I would say I'm a proponent of not overdoing it. So anytime you make the system too complicated, it's, it's more of a chance of you not keeping it. So um, I, I like to think of time as buckets of time and use instead of having you know, scheduling every minute, you absolutely would have your appointments in there, right? Because right. for instance, you don't want to miss those. <laughs> um, those are commitments you've made. But you also might, for instance, um, if you don't want to have to schedule every minute, you might want to put in blocks of time where you know that that's family time. Maybe you color code that. Maybe you have blocks of time where you know it's personal exercise errand time or whatever that is. 
Um, so you think about it more like that rather than scheduling every single minute. That that would be more my approach, more of a holistic approach. Yeah. Is that, so that's kind of what you do. You 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 take and uh, do you allocate a certain number of hours in a day? Like you block out two or three hours, not with a specific task, but say you know this is going to be some family stuff. This is going to be some work stuff and that kind of thing. Right. Like I already know that you know during the day that that's my work day, you know, it's not family time day. It's that's what that's happening. So that's are big chunks of time where that's devoted to that. Right. Of course, being a solopreneur, as you can imagine, some of the work time also flows into what might be family time. So I have to be really protective of that off time too. Well, so how, how about this? When you get near the end of a, a time block, let's say you're working on a project, because uh, I, I seem to fall into this. You know, I just want to do, I, I'm almost done. I just need another 15 minutes, and then it turns into a half an hour or an hour. How do, you, how do you cut it off? Do you have any techniques for that? I do. And you know what I do? I love my timers. Okay. <laughs> okay? So I will, I'll look at my day. I'll see what's happening. I'll say, okay, I have, you know, these priorities that need to get done, aside from seeing clients, aside from all the other things that I'm working on. And so I will give myself a certain amount of time to work, and I, if I'm concerned about getting like too involved that I need to move on, I'll set the timer. When the timer rings, I renegotiate. Okay. But it's that, it's that auditory bell that says, okay, Linda, this is when you think you want it to stop. Take a look at where you are. Can you stop? Do you need another five minutes? Do you need another 15? And then I'm pretty good about stopping and d taking, either taking a break, maybe a green break or moving on to the next thing. So that is Excellent advice. Oh, so what, anything else in the time category that we want to cover? Yeah, um, I would say one of the huge things that you, you see is lack of focus when it comes to time. And that lack of focus often, ha or it's, it's really not focusing. It has to do with the, the distractions that you allow to come in. And, you know, we all have them, right? Mm -hmm. Internet surfing, texting, calls, doing things on our list that really aren't so important, you know, you know the distractions. Um, and, and that can happen for all of us. So I think the key there is to identify what your distractions are, because they're going to be different for all of us, right? Some people aren't texters and some people aren't huge emailers and whatever. Figure out what your distractions are and then set some boundaries for yourself. You know, so if you are totally, you know, taken away by social media and all that stuff, um, maybe you need some tech-less time set into your calendar. You know, maybe again, you need some um, to decide that you're going to answer emails not at every time the bell dings, but at certain times in the day. So that's, that's something to help with the focus, because if you are not allowing all these distractions, then what the work that you deem important can be done, or even the relaxation that you want to do can be done without these other things getting in the way. Wow. Those are great tips. Okay, anything else in the time category? Because our time is kind of getting short here, and we have one more category to go. Well, um, I think, why don't we go on to the next okay. one? I mean, there's always stuff, right? right but we'll, right. we'll move on, yeah. All right, so, so number three, what's the third essential? Number three, the third essential of getting organized is um, space. And space, as we know, can, be, can become cluttered, and that level of clutter what looks like clutter for one person may be very different for another, but we all know it, that if our space doesn't support who we are, what we're trying to do, what we want to feel like, it can really affect how we move through our day, how we feel about ourselves, how we interact with others. So that's, that's a, a really big essential of how we manage our space. Um, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, okay, so what are the top, a couple, two or three ways that we can uh, nail that because space clutter can be pretty overwhelming, you know, especially if you're a hoarder or, I mean, or someone is chronically disorganized. I mean, that's can be a big issue. It can be a big issue. So the first thing I would say is you want to kind of reclaim control and figure out in your space, no matter how cluttered it is or how not cluttered it is, you want to look at what's actually working in your space and what's not. So the things that are working, you really don't need to address those. And I would say that in any space, no matter how it is, there are things that are working. And you want to focus on those because those are clues as to what will work going forward for the areas that aren't. So that's, that's one thing. Um, the other thing is, and I'm sure you've heard this a lot of times, I know you, this is such a great series with all the organizers, but the idea of creating homes for things. Mm -hmm. 
so that um, sometimes we end up with clutter because things come in and they have nowhere to go. It's, it may be that there is a place they can go, but you, we might not have thought about where they should go. So the idea is you create a home, um, but before you create a home, there's a key. You want to be ruthless about asking the question, is this thing home worthy, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't even deserve a home. Maybe it should be released. So that's, that's a key in, in working on the creating homes piece. Um, another question that I love to use when you're trying to evaluate should something stay or go, because again, if you're trying to have less clutter, less stuff around, um, one of the questions that's, that's very, been very useful for a lot of clients is I ask them, has it overstayed its welcome, right? Because things, yeah, things come in, they have, they've served their purpose, but you know what? Then they just remain and they're really not necessary anymore. So that's sometimes helpful in that letting go process. Well, do you think there's a, a, a you should take it like one room at a time kind of thing? Or uh, do you do a whole like walkthrough, let's say of a house? Uh, I mean, how do you how do you take a bigger mess and chunk it down? I mean, what's what's your the way you like to do it? Well, in terms of how I actually approach it, a lot of that has to do with what the client is comfortable with. So, you know, from my perspective, I like to see as much as they want to show me first. But you know what? When you're working, starting working with a client, it's a new client. You're 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 building a relationship and you're building trust. And sometimes clients aren't comfortable showing you everything. So whatever they're willing and wanting to show, that's what I will look at first, knowing that there's other things, but maybe in time we'll see that. In terms of um, the approach, whether you would work in one area, one room at a time, that's a great way to do it. However, again, depending on the client, they may not want to do that because as you're working, especially if you're doing an entire household, it takes time to do that. It's a project. They may get bored in one room. They may feel restless working in one room. They may one day feel the need they need to shift gears and work in another area for a variety of reasons. So part of whether you're working with an organizer or not, you want to allow yourself the flexibility to move into different areas if that's what works for you. If not, sure, finish a room and move on. That's a, that's a very um, linear, logical way of working, and that can work great for some, but for others, not going to hold their attention. <laughs> right. so. Well, we're kind of out of time here, but I want to uh, talk a little bit about your book, The Other Side of Organized, because a lot of this is um, uh, in the book, right? Is that correct? Yes, there's a lot. Uh, a lot of what I've talked about and, and more is in the book. And it's also, I write a weekly blog on the other side of organized.com. And so m much of what I'm talking about can be found there and, and more. And we also have great conversations that go on in the blog. So if you want to be able to talk about some of these ideas with, with me and my colleagues and friends and the, the community of readers that I have on that blog, it's a great place to do that. Well, I love your, your interview series too. It's really, uh, I really enjoy reading through that. And there is a lot of participation too with uh, other organizers and people in the community. So uh, definitely we will link to that in our, our show notes. How about your organizing practice, your business side? What kind of clients do you work with and how can people reach you? Well, I work with clients, you know, from, from very young, five, five, six years old, all the way up into their 80s, everything in between. Um, I work hands-on throughout the uh, New York area, although I've gone as far as Las Vegas to go work with a client. Um, but I also do coaching, phone coaching, so I really can work all over the place. And the best way to reach me, you can reach me by phone at 914 271 Five six seven three, or you can connect with me on either of my websites, osoorganized.com or the other side of organized.com. I'm I'm very reachable, active on social media. You can find me in a lot of places, right, John? <laughs> you are everywhere. I will have to say that. Uh, you know, you don't have to look too far before you uh, run into you. So that's great. You're out there, and you really give a lot to the community too, which I think is a, is a great thing. So, well, Linda, thanks again for uh, joining us, and and we will definitely have you back again. Great. Thanks so much for having me, John. All right. Linda Samuels, OhSoOrganized.com, today on Keeping You Organized. Coming up next time on Keeping You Organized. A lot of people don't think of it this way, but a kitchen is really the hub of the home. A lot of activities happen there. 
And um, I really believe that if you're organized in your kitchen, it can make for a healthier eating and cooking environment.